so yesterday we just discuss about the mutable and the immutable objects and after that we move to the input and uh, oh, sorry int and float you know the float classes so i am writing once again all the data type which are available inside python int float okay and uh, the next is your complex and then your string okay and then your list tuple set okay and frozen set then we have dictionary okay then we have bool and then we have byte and byte array okay and none and the range okay so we will discuss step by step we will just you know take uh, do the introduction about all these things in great detail and so that in future you want any you you want find any difficulty while we are entering into the every object or every class because there are n number of method which are associated with this string okay with the tuple again and number of method but today we will just get the overview of the all you know the all data types which are available inside python but the mostly the sevens are important one that we already discussed yesterday so because all of the problems maximum done with that seven data types okay so i am starting once again i am taking very basic introduction in as we already discuss inside python if you want to do this okay whatever value that you want to assign that would be considered as a int okay that would be considered as a int there is no long data type because in other programming language if i take the reference of c c++ there is one extra data type that data type is called long okay the long name it's uh, specify itself that i am supposed to take the you know the large amount of data but inside python you don't need to keep remember this long because this long is not available inside python so there is only you know whatever the data that, he, that is into the integer format whether it's a long whether it's a short so doesn't doesn't matter okay it would be considered as a int so this is you know why why i am focusing on it because inside uh, you know the c c++ when let's suppose you are starting learn to c c++ you have to keep remember approximately you know 92 keywords 92 keywords okay but inside python inside python the approximate keywords are 35 so, so your task is become more easier as comparatively c c++ or even inside the java okay so by the, because we, you now after learning this python definitely the interviewer can ask this type of question inside the interview room okay you, you learn this python so do you have basic knowledge about c c++ as well okay so don't worry about it so uh, here the only data is that is called integer that we already discussed yesterday okay now the next is the the types of number system that how we can define the data okay the one is the decimal okay the decimal then binary okay octal and then is the hexa these are the number system okay as we already know the decimal the binary okay binary means 0 and 1 the data is in the format of the 0 and 1 whatever inside computer inside machines they just understand the concept that is the 0 and 1 0 bit bit and 1 bit okay this is the binary data basically what exactly this zero this zero is you know okay so let me explain this concept so what is what is computer basically the computer is nothing that is the collection of the you know the signals that is the collection of the signals if if i discuss about this thing the zero mean the zero mean the current off and the one mean current on this concept is called the binary okay the system understand only these things nothing to else whatever write let's suppose i enter this you know i i write this a i write this a computer doesn't understand this a okay computer do doesn't understand a okay what it's understand it's understand the data in the form of the binary everything is in the form of the binary and zero and one format now what exactly the binary is basically it is the current flow okay so this is like like this this one represent one this one represent zero the current on current off okay again one again zero again one again zero again one again zero now the system will understand okay this is the combination of 101010101010 okay so this concept is called binary data how we can convert the data into the binary just like this i think you guys already did just give me a quick refresher for this in okay if i want to convert this 10 into the binary number system then the output is 1010 okay so for the same what you have to do 2 250 Okay, two, two, four. Remainder, you are getting one. Okay, again, 
two one two remainder zero. So now you have to start from the bottom bottom of this scenario. Okay. So what output I will get one zero one zero. So this is the number system representation ten representation into the binary. Okay. The number ten representation into the binary. Sometime. Sometime in 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 later in later when we will move into the course, I will give you the assignment that you are supposed to define your own function, which will take the data into the integer format, and you have to convert that data into the binary number. Okay, into the binary number. For example, the same for the fifty, the binary representation is one one one. Okay, four times one. For example, one two three, there is binary represented something like this. Not exactly this. It would be something like this. Okay, not exactly this one. Okay, this is something like this one. so this concept is called binary this is number system so how here inside python you if you want to represent you know if you want to store the data into the binary format the way is this one 0 b now what this b represent the, this represent the inside interpreter that's the number is a binary number okay so when i use it 1010 10, then it will treat this as a binary it will treat this as a binary because i already represent it okay this one 0b representation representation of the binary inside python so there is some another way that way is called 0b the 0 and b okay then after that you have to write the combination of the bits now it will convert into the binary now interpreter will understand okay this is the binary data otherwise if you enter this one 1010 it will understand it 1010 okay 1010 But but you entered the binary. Your system will understand as an integer, okay? But I want to you know display this data. I want to store this data into the binary format. Then what I have to do? Zero b, okay? You have to impart this zero b in front of this number, okay? And always take one zero one zero. Binary is always two bits, zero and one, nothing else, okay? Now the representation of binary, the combination of bits. If I want to representation of ten, then the combination is one zero. 10 okay now the system will understand okay this is the binary representation now now the system understand this is the binary representation of 1010 10. okay i will show you practically then the picture would be more clear so so this is the concept but i want to check it out i don't know i don't know i don't know what is the binary representation of this one so for the same we have a function okay we have a function that function is called bin okay it's very simple bin of 183 okay bin of 183 now you will get the appropriate data according to this 183 you will get the binary you know the binary uh, transformation of 183 so this concept basically this concept is this concept is called type casting okay this concept is called type casting what is the meaning of that you are getting the data into the integer format now you are converting this integer format into the binary representation to convert this in data into the binary representation the python itself give you a function that is all available inside the python that function is called bit okay that function is called bit later on later on in upcoming sections i will give you the assignments okay i will give you assignment that you are supposed to design this function how exactly it works this this is the task of this one okay but for this point of time if you want to convert this into the binary okay it's this into the binary then you are supposed to use this bin okay you want to convert the octal the base of the octal is 8 okay the base of the octal is 8 here here if you want to convert it into the octal that you have to you have to divide with 8 okay the concept is again same you have to go from the bottom of the direction so for let's suppose this one is the integer and you want to convert into the octal then what you have to do oct oct okay the representation of the octal is 0 o okay 0 o then let's suppose 1 2 3 that's the representation of the octal number now the same thing is the hexa okay the same thing is the hexa that is the hexadecimal okay so hexa the same thing h e x okay x e h e x and the represent of representation of same 0 x okay 0 x that is the representation of the hexa number how hexa is the base is 16 but keep this point into mind keep this point into mind okay if the remainder is between 0 to 9 okay here the remainder all, always you will get the when i divide things with 2 always you will get the remainder 0 or 1 okay when you divide the things with you know you know 8 how what remainder that you will get you will get 0 and between 7 0 to between 7 okay but here here 
if if i divide the things with 16 how what remainder i will get i will get the remainder 0 to 15 perfect 0 to 15 but 0 to 9 okay if the remainder is 0 to 9 then you have to simply put that remainder for example the remainder that you got 9 perfectly you will put that 9 if you got remainder 8 okay definitely the remainder is 8 but if remainder is 10 remainder is 11 remainder is 12 remainder is 13 remainder is 14 remainder is 15 then what you have to do because you are not supposed to the hexadecimal number don't say it use 10 use 11 use 12 but what the representation of for that hexa for 10 if the remainder that you got 10 then what you have to do you have to represent as a okay if remainder 11 then b if remainder 12 c if remainder 13 d if remainder 14 e if remainder 15 f so this is the funda this is the funda okay so hexadecimal says it because these are the mathematical rules that are defined okay the same rule that they we have to implement over here but don't worry about it you don't need to do anything you are just using this octal you are using this binary you are using this hexa but later on in upcoming days i will give you the assignment okay i will give you number let's suppose 100 and i will say you without using this bin okay without using this bin that you have to convert it into the binary into the octal into the hexa okay that would be your assignment but for this point of time you just understand this the, the number system okay decimal with the base 10 okay binary with base 2 octal with base 8 and hexa with base 16 okay so this and this concept is called this concept is called let's suppose the integer that i am converting that integer into the integer into the binary okay so this concept is called technically type casting okay type casting the meaning of the type casting is i am converting i am converting one data type to another data type okay one data type to another data type that concept is called type casting technically okay in all programming languages so if i show you if i show you so okay if i show you then the picture would be more clear id <coughs> LA. So this is the shell. So let's suppose x is equal to 10. Okay, x is equal to 10. So this is the decimal number. I want to convert it into the binary. Okay, so conversion happens like this. Now you can get the output. This representation of 10 is 0b1010 with the help of this function. Okay, and this concept is called typecasting. I am getting the data into the decimal format and I am converting it into the binary format okay and for the octal OCT of OCT of X okay now you will get 12 the octal representation of 10 is 12 now the next is let's suppose I want to convert it into the hexa okay so for the hexadecimal the function is hex okay so now you can check it out you can check it out the remainder the remainder is 10 so so it use a okay it use a the same thing okay let me let me show you one more thing inside python okay inside python i cannot assign number with zero the number cannot be start with zero so keep this point into the mind because this is the invalid statement okay inside python the number never start with zero okay if i try to do this you will get the invalid invalid token why so because it won't allow you because zero representation for some something else okay something else for zero b okay zero b now if you want to use the same thing inside this i am using zero b okay zero b one zero one zero okay now what is this what is this this is the binary number and what is the binary number that is that is 10 when i print x automatically implemented that the number is binary i get the data binary it automatically converted into the decimal representation the same thing 
let's suppose your number is one two three four five six seven eight whatever number now you want to convert it into the hexa okay hexa so for the same now this is the hexa representation of this huge number you want to convert it into the binary no problem at all no problem at all now this is the representation of the binary okay you want to convert it into the octal oct of x now you will get this okay don't use x don't worry about it simply pass the number what number that you want to pass i want to pass this number and i want to convert this number into the binary okay so this is the binary representation the binary representation of this number now system understand it okay the current come current come current come then current goes okay if i draw something like is okay this is the current come current come current come and suddenly current go current come okay current go current go okay one 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 okay and current go something like this so this wave is something represent like this so it is all about the you know all about the, the current on and current off because system understand only electrical things okay because inside this system the electric uh, every component is a chip and chip are operate with the help of the current and that current is basically this one zero and one zero and one only two states one the current go zero the current goes one the current off so this is you know the electric electronics description about this current okay so this concept is called typecasting that you are supposed to convert the one data to another data type okay so the next is float that we already discussed the float the same thing 10.5 okay the 10.678910 both will be considered as a float there is no data type that data type is called double okay there is no such data type so in other programming language if you want to store data something like this okay the the, the data okay something like this then you are supposed to take the double but inside python inside python the concept of double is nothing the everything is float okay in this case the value is float in this case the value is float okay so this is very basics about your your float data type now the next one is the next one is your complex okay complex the complex data type the complex data type is basically a real part and imaginary part okay the one number is real and the second number is imaginary if you want to define a data that is the complex okay that is the complex so how i can tell how i can define 10 plus 11j okay 10 plus 11j so this one is the representation of the complex number how i can check it out type of type of x now what output you will get you will get the class of complex okay the class of complex you will get this this output how my system understand it because this is the format this one is the format 10 plus 11 j yes you have to use the j j for imaginary part okay so this would be considered as a real part okay this would be considered as a imaginary part okay so keep this point into mind so let's suppose i want to check it out what is the you know the real part of this number very simple x dot a real okay x dot real now the number is 10 you will get this 10 now if you want to check it out the imaginary part x dot image okay image now you will get the 11 j okay so this would be represent as a real part for the mathematical complex solutions okay this would be considered as a real part this would be considered as a imaginary part so i want to check it out x dot real you will get 10 x dot imaginary you will get x dot image you will get the imaginary part okay so in this concept okay in this concept the real part can any number okay can be any number okay can be any number now what is the meaning of this you can use over here octal number okay you can use over here hexa number you can use over here the binary number but in the imaginary part keep this point into mind in the imaginary part these number systems are not allowed here the number is only decimal okay number is only decimal you are not supposed to take you are not supposed to take this octal hexa binary you are only supposed to take the decimal number so let me show you the picture would be more clear okay so let's suppose now understanding 10 x is equal to 10 plus 
11j okay now when i press type of this x now you will get the type that is the complex x dot real part now you will get 10.0 x dot complex part sorry x dot imaginary part okay now you will get the 11 the 11 is a the 11 is a imaginary the 10 is a real part okay so for example now i want to assign something like this 0 b 0 b 1 0 1 0 plus okay plus 12 j now it is acceptable it is acceptable but the same thing if i perform over here 0 b 1 0 1 0 immediately you will get the error message why so because inside real part okay the binary octal and hexa is not acceptable inside sorry inside imaginary part the binary octal and hexa is not applicable inside real part the number can be anything the number can be anything okay so my number is let's suppose x is equal to 10 plus 11j y is equal to 12 plus 12 plus 12 j okay so this these are two both numbers are complex category okay now i want to perform the addition x plus y happily accepted happily accepted the number the real added into the real the imaginary added into the imaginary okay this type of you know the uh, the complex data type when you are solving a mathematical problems okay at that time you have to perform this real and imaginary part so we have a predefined class and that class is called complex where you can define the number system in according to the complex data okay so any doubt till now before proceeding further you can ask me okay so the next is your bool the next is your bool data type the boolean okay boolean it's a full form is boolean but why should i keep the you remember the huge name the very simple pythony give you the simple way simple you are supposed to use bool okay bool the bool represent only two numbers the bool represent only two numbers the true true and false that's it that's it okay true and false make sure make sure when you are writing true okay this t should be capital okay when you are writing the false this f should be capital okay so you have to remember this thing inside python in uh, well, all other languages use the same concept when you are defining the boolean com boolean objects or boolean values the boolean value is only only in true or into the false on or off the funda is same on and off so on mean true okay off mean false the concept is same okay and make sure the true that when you are writing this t the t should be capital when you are writing this f the f should be capital so this is the true okay for example for example i am writing bool okay so i am writing x is equal to true so now its mean is this is the this is the one value true value okay is the true value and the type of this one is the type of this one is bool okay so let me show you let me show you now i am writing x is equal to true okay so x is x is true okay x is true okay so this is that what is the type type of x is type of x is bool so this is the boolean value okay this is the boolean value now for example x is equal to 1 okay x is equal to 1 when i convert it into the bool okay when i convert it into the bool what output i will get i will get true value okay i will get true value so how the bool i am converting i am converting this decimal to this decimal to boolean data type and what decimal contain decimal contain one okay when i press enter you will get the true okay you will get the true so now i am using zero i am using zero now this x is equal to integer this x is equal to integer now i want to convert this integer into bool now you are getting the false so this is the funda okay this is the funda now for example x is equal to x is equal to let's suppose this a okay this a now when i convert when i convert this into bool the output would be true so output would be true 
okay output would be true keep this point into the mind so here when okay when when you are converting any integer value any integer value the output would be true any integer value for example i am taking over here now this time bool of bool of let's suppose 1 2 3 4 5 6 now it will give you the true output okay so this is the funda if you converting any boolean value that would be considered as a true value okay so bool when give you the false when the value is zero when the value is zero then it will give you the false always it will give you the false when the value is zero so keep this funda into the mind any string any string okay any string you want to convert it into the bool it will give you it will give you always true okay always true it will give you the false only when the value is zero okay the value is zero okay if i take okay if i take minus value again it will give me it will give me true so what in what cases it will give you the false that's when the value is zero zero mean no current okay zero mean no current the signal is off just imagine it everything is off but here you produce something that again converted into the bits here you could produce something again converted into the bits and there is true and it will be considered only in the case of uh, uh, zero it would be considered as a false so keep this funda inside the mind so this is called type casting okay this concept is called type casting converting okay converting one data type okay one data type to another to another that concept is called that concept is called type casting that suppose i have int i converted it into the binary happily converted okay i have int i converted into the hexa happily converted i converted it into the bool happily converted okay i converted it into the octal happily converted but sometimes student do mistake sometimes student do mistake for example this x contain this a okay contains this a now a is a is string okay a is string if i try to convert it if i try to convert it into the integer what would happen what would happen you will get the error message okay error message the error name is the characters cannot be converted into the into the into the integer value the base 10 error you will something like this now if i show you the same thing i am converting this a okay i am converting this a into integer okay now you will get the error message invalid literal int with base of 10 okay with base of 10 so you are not supposed to convert the characters into the integer or any another data type okay you cannot convert it into the bool you can convert it into the bool but you cannot convert it into the binary octal and any other type okay so this is little things that you have to keep inside the mind okay so now here here i am taking this i am taking this now what is this now what is this this is string okay this is a string this is a string now if you want to convert it into the integer yes happily convert it why so because this string contain only the entries which can be convertible into the integer it contain the digits okay it contain the digits and the digits can be converted to the integer so python automatically uh, python automatically convert it into the integer why so because it contains only it contains only in only digit value and digits are easily converted into the integer so let me show you let me show you let's suppose x is equal to this one okay 10 now what is 10 type of x the type of x is str it's a string because whatever inside double quotes or single quotes it would be considered as a string so later on we will uh, understand it now in the next section is again our string so this would be considered as a this would be considered as a string now if i want to convert this into the integer now it's happily converted so keep this point into the mind when when string contain only digits then you are supposed to convert it into the integer for example now this string contain 10 a okay 10 a now you want to convert it into the integer you will get the error message 
okay why so because this time it's again contain a special character and that character is a okay and a is not convertible into the integer but these two things are convertible into the integer but this string contain all these three so it is not feasible to convert it into the integer but yes there are some time that the hard requirement is you need only this time so later on when we learn the for loop i will give you the assignment okay at that time if the string is getting something like this okay the string is getting something like this for example the dollar sign okay and you want to find out the actual price that is the 10 and you have to add in it inside this if that okay so what you will do because this won't allow you directly that you are supposed to convert it into the you know into the into the integer you will get the error message but your requirement is that yet you have to perform the mathematical operation that is plus okay but you are getting the data into this format so at that time you have to think the logic and we will solve this problem statement when we will move to the for loop section so don't worry about it for this point of time there is no direct way there is no direct way if this is the you know if the string contain any special character or any character okay let's suppose this contain dollar at the rate sign okay now if you want to convert it into 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 integer you will get the error message because these two are not convertible okay these two are not convertible but your requirement is this one so there is no direct method you have to think the logic for the same that you have to design your own logic that would be clean this data clean this two data from the entire string so keep this fun time to remind okay for this point of time these are very key point important key point because student generally do mistake over here okay normally the student do mistake over here so i think the picture is little clear okay any doubt you can ask me right now till now if you are any doubt you can ask me before moving further okay no doubt yeah yeah sure sorry x is it x is equal to 0x okay ab so you this no don't worry the capital or small doesn't matter okay ab so this yeah yeah of course okay i'll be show you i'll show you don't worry about it okay x is equal to this because this is the hexa number okay automatically converted 0 ab now automatically converted that is 171 the meaning of this one is 171 okay if the if the if i convert okay let me show you the proof hex of 171 you will get ab okay you will get ab okay so this now this time this is integer and i int i convert this into the hexadecimal and you are getting the ab here this time you are getting this and you have to convert it into the this one and then it will get the appropriate sequence okay so anyone having any other another doubt please ask me before moving ahead okay so <clears throat> the next is very important data type in all of programming language in all of programming language and that data type is called string yes string the string is a data type which is most important okay most important because in 90% cases we fetch the data in the form of strings okay whether in the case of file handling okay database handling okay or you are getting the data somewhere else 90% the data would be into the string format okay and it is very important to understand the string concept okay i will touch the basic part today but later on when we will move to this section i will give you 10 assignment that are regarding to this string okay and we will discuss in great detail what are the various method associated with this okay so we today we will learn the very basics about this thing so inside python okay inside python the first thing is string is nothing okay for our convenient for our convenient we pronounce as a string but actual class who is responsible to handle this thing that class name is str okay that class name is str okay for our convenient we speak it as a string but technically there is nothing like a string there is the class which is responsible to handle this string that class name is str don't need to keep remember the complete long names 
So very simple three three character name that is the str. So this is the first funda. Okay. Now x is equal to hello hello y is equal to hello. Is there any difference? Is there any difference? Yes. There is difference. The one string is starting from double quotes and and closing with double quote. One string is starting with single quotes and and closing with single quote. When I see these things, I will form the difference between these two because one is starting with double quotes and ending with double quotes. One is starting with single quote, ending with single quote. But but technically technically there is no difference. No difference. My Python interpreter will, if I press type of x, okay, type of y, in the both of cases, you will get the output. That output is called class of str. Keep this point into mind, okay? So, there is no difference. No difference. Whatever, if you write this thing something like this, don't worry about it. If you write this thing something like this, don't worry about it. But make sure. If you're starting your string with double quotes, you are supposed to enclose your string with double quote. If you're starting your string with single quote, mandatory to close with your string single quote. Okay, technically there is no difference. Whether you decide this, whether you de decide it, choice is again your. Okay, choice is again your. But yes, okay, my, my answer is little diplomatic. Okay, but yes, there is slightly difference. Okay, slightly difference. I will tell you when we close this string, I will tell you that point what exactly this slightly difference okay for till till okay for till this point okay for this point there is no difference so inside your fit inside your mind it would be considered as a string it would be considered as a string okay so don't worry about it so both of the cases the interpreter will seem uh, treat as a string and in the both of the cases the methods which are associated with this thing are same whether you use it whether you use, you use it so don't worry about this concept okay so now moving ahead now so i am defining string now like this don't worry about it don't worry okay let me show you first then the picture would be more clear so i am writing over here x is equal to double quotes hello okay i am closing this string now carefully observe i am starting and enclosing string with double quotes y is equal to hello okay same observe carefully i i started and enclose this thing with double quotes and single quotes now type of x you will get this thing type of y you are get sorry spelling mistake don't worry about it the t y t e type of y in the both of the cases the output is output is string okay the output is string so there is no difference okay there is no difference. keep this point into mind okay now i am moving ahead so x is equal to hello okay i assign this string to x okay to x now observe carefully by default by default the indexing indexing always start from zero always start from zero keep this funda into the mind all programming language C, C++, Java, Python, okay, the indexing always start from zero except Julia, okay, except Julia. The Julia is again a programming language where indexing start from one, okay, but that is not cup of our tea. So in all programming language, whatever language that you listen till now, the indexing always start from zero, okay, if I define it, H, E, L, L. Oh, okay so let me write this capital so picture would be more clear okay and this is the capital so now understand this concept by default uh, i am repeating same by default the indexing always start from zero okay so this is on zeroth index this is on one index this is on two index this thing on three index this things on index so keep this one down. this concept is called positive indexing okay this concept is called positive indexing keep this point into mind okay perfect very good now inside python a very beautiful feature that feature is called negative indexing okay this feature 
applicable only inside python none of other languages will provide you this feature and that feature is called negative indexing okay negative indexing and negative indexing always start from minus 1 always start from minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 okay this is called negative indexing keep this point into the mind the positive indexing always start from 0 positive indexing always start from 0 negative indexing always start from minus okay minus 1 so always start from the backward direction so this is the important one and this negative indexing is applicable is applicable only in python none of other programming language will provide you such type of feature here if i check it out okay if i check it out what is the positive indexing of h the positive indexing of h is 0 and what is the positive indexing of uh, e that is the 1 okay what is the negative indexing of h that is minus 5 what is the negative indexing of e that is minus 4 so this feature is available only with python none of other programming language will provide you this feature keep this point into the mind okay now move next so the next concept is this concept is called indexing perfect we know very well the next concept is called slicing okay the next concept is called slicing now what is the meaning of the slicing okay please give me one slice from this mango okay please give me one slice from this mango now what is the meaning of this that i am fetching out the required slice okay required piece from this entire data from this entire data that i am fetching out the required piece okay that concept is called slicing the same into the general life same into the general life please give me one slice from this mango what is the meaning of this you are taking a one piece from the entire mango so over here same thing you want to fetch out something from this entire string that is called slicing okay and how slicing is possible because of indexing so these two terms are correlated how we can perform the slicing because we have index according to index we can fetch it out so this concept is called slicing now understand how we can do the slicing very simple x of okay whenever the term slicing use bin das okay be confident and use use these braces whenever 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 the term is slicing you are supposed to use these braces whether it's a string whether it's a list whether it's a tuple so keep this funda again into the mind okay without any doubt when you are performing slicing just use these scare braces now okay if i pass the index of zero i pass the index of zero what output i will get what output i will get i will get h perfect very good okay when i pass when i pass minus three okay when i pass minus three what output i will get i will get l very good when i pass when i pass when i pass one what output i will get i will get e okay when i pass four what output i will get i will get o okay when i pass minus one what output i will get i will get again o when i pass x of five now what will happen what will happen you will get error you will get error why so because 5 index is not available and you are looking for that address which is not available so it will give you the error message error message the array index that you are looking for is not available okay so this concept is called slicing the slicing i am getting out the slice from this string okay this piece okay again into the next way i get out this way and there are two way of slicing whether you are using positive whether you are using negative choice is again your because python give you two features whatever feature you feel comfortable okay with the positive slicing you perform with the positive one negative slicing perform with the negative one okay choice is again your very good very good now sir i want i want this combination okay sir i want this el sir that is my requirement that i want this el okay sir i want this h e e double l sir i want this l o sir i want this e l l now how i can do the 
multiple character slicing okay how i can do the multiple character slicing so for the multiple character slicing now i am performing okay see see carefully observe carefully x of okay x of one colon okay x of one colon okay one colon four one colon four now what output i will get what output will i will get observe carefully listen carefully what output i will get i will get the index of one index of two index of three okay index of one index of two index of three inside python inside python when i use something like this it's mean up to up to four now meaning of up to four the four i will not consider i will run up to four up to four mean the index the starting point i told okay the index number one start from index number one go to up to four now meaning of up to is the four is not included so my boundary is one two one two three so what output i will get i will get the index on one index on one e okay index on two l index on three l perfect i will get this e l l okay so in the next case in the next case now now you guys will observe carefully x of 2 colon 2 colon 3 okay now now what output i will get my boundary is i am saying 2 up to 3 but 3 is not my boundary so i have left only i have left only 2 i have left only 2 so what output i will get i will get only L. so always up to always up to because this type of question are very important when you are going to give the exam of the microsoft okay they ask such type of question two or three question i i get in the examination when i pass the microsoft examination at that time they they give me question something like this there were two or three question that are uh, you know the based on this slicing okay so in the next case observe carefully observe carefully okay i am saying i am saying uh, zero colon three okay now what i am saying i am saying start from zero now my pointer is over here then from what uh, what extent that i have to move one and two now what is output h e l perfect perfect okay now again i am i am taking very carefully okay this time this time four okay now now what output i will get in this case i will get i will get okay i will get i didn't specify the starting position okay i didn't specify the starting position so from where i have to start so it's mean when i when i leave this point empty okay it's mean that i have to start from zero and up to four up to four mean the index of zero index of one index of two okay index of three now what output i will get h e l l perfect perfect okay now you guys will tell me you guys will tell me okay let me change the marker okay you guys will tell me now x of 1 colon okay tell me tell me what output i will get just tell me what output i will get the h only h i am saying okay observe carefully i am saying yes h e l l o i am saying what i am saying sorry not h not h okay i am saying i am standing over here and i didn't specify the end point so end point i have to i have to consider all okay okay one more case one more chance and uh, this time observe carefully okay that's it that's it haan ji please tell me tell me what output i will get hello ma'am please this time your turn yeah perfect i will get the complete one hello okay one more time that i am giving one more assignment okay colon colon now can or can anyone tell me what output i will get into this case okay in this case i will get again the complete output that is h e l l o 
but sir what is this what is this this step is called this this parameter is called stepping okay this parameter is called stepping the stepping mean how long i have to take a jump okay how long i have to take a jump by default listen carefully by default this value is always one okay by default this value is always one here i didn't specify any value that's mean it automatically taking one here i didn't specify any value it's mean it's automatically taking one anywhere anywhere i didn't spice, uh, uh, specify anything it automatically taking one okay but i can control this step i can control this step so how i can control it let me show you okay again i am writing over here x is equal to hello okay hello now 0 1 2 3 4 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 perfect now this time observe carefully 1 colon 4 colon colon 2 okay now i am saying i am saying i have to start from this that's mean i have to start from 1 and i have to go up to go up to 4 up to 4 mean my boundary is 1 2 and 3 i am i am starting over here standing over here now how long i have to take a jump the jump parameter is 2 that's mean i am standing over one index that one index mean the e okay e and after that 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 mean 3 now i reach over 3 so output would be l in this case the output would be l okay for example taking one more case x colon colon okay colon colon 2 now what output i will get into in in this case i i have to take the complete string but i am specifying the jumping the jumping is 2 so i am standing over here on the 0th index h okay then i take a jump of 2 l then i again take a jump of 2 that is o so h l o okay so for this time now the uh, uh, question for you guys observe carefully okay observe carefully now you guys have to tell me what output i will get now tell me please and this is little 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 tricky or little confusing okay from bupinder sir the output is e and o okay and from helen ma'am h okay and from yogesh sir okay don't worry about it so understand this point okay okay no problem no problem no problem so first i will take this another one i will take one more example so babinder sir sorry helen ma'am sorry okay yoga sir you have doubt no problem no problem understand it so x is equal to hello first i will take this hello example then i will take something else i that's why i am normally take this hello because if you understand this the concept is very much clear okay one because this is little little tricky word okay now what i what assignment i give you observe carefully one colon three okay and taking the jump of three now what is my boundary first understand what is my boundary up to three that mean i am standing over here one point i am standing on one point that's mean it i will consider okay that is permanent point i am standing over here that's mean i will consider this point so consider this point e would be there okay e would be there so after that my boundary is 1 and 2 1 and 2 observe carefully my boundary is 1 and 2 i am supposed to move only the cursor on 1 and cursor on 2 apart from that i am not supposed to go anywhere okay that's my boundary but what i am saying i am saying you are standing over here after that you are supposed to take a jump of 3 jump of 3 1 plus 3 how, how long I will reach over here? I will reach on the point that is 4. And 4 is in my boundary or beyond my boundary? That is 
beyond my boundary so i won't consider it so output in this case only e okay only e now i think the picture is clear to everyone okay perfect now get uh, you guys clear picture is clear or not okay now this time you guys observe carefully but i am trying to say x colon colon 3 that's it okay now you guys will tell me Please tell what output I will get. Anyone, please. L. H E L L. Okay, from your guys. the h e l l okay from rupinder sir now your turn yes okay understand it and don't worry about it this is wrong output okay and just don't worry okay so observe carefully what i am saying i am saying the complete thing i am saying the complete thing but what i am saying i am taking a jump of 3 So my boundary is one, two, three, four. Okay, sorry, zero, zero, one, two, three, four. That is my complete boundary, and I am standing over. I didn't specify the starting point. I didn't specify the end point. By default, it is taking the complete string. Okay, so my indexing zero, one, two, three, four. That means I have property of zero index, one index, two index, three index. I can move anywhere. Okay, I can move anywhere. From starting when I didn't specify anything, that means I am st standing over here. Okay, so this concept that I have to consider. Okay, I have to consider H. After that, I am saying you are standing on zero index. Then after you are supposed to take the jump of three. So zero plus three. From from where I will move? I will move on the fourth position. Directly from this, I will move to the. Sorry, I will move to the this position. Zero plus three. That is three. Sorry, that's my fault. Zero plus three. That is three. Then I will move to this point. i will move to this point on the three index what output i have i have i have l okay so after that okay it again take three step 3 plus 3 6 6 is not anywhere 6 is not anywhere so because i have this string okay i have this string and i am taking the jump of 3 i didn't specify the end point i didn't specify the starting point when i didn't specify the starting or end points it's mean i have to take this complete string when i didn't specify the stepping it's mean it will take by default one stepping okay but here i specify the three stepping i am standing over here i am taking the jump of 3 after taking the jump of 3 0 plus 3 that become the 3 so i will get h and l i will get h and l so this one is the funda i think now picture is clear no i am changing the word i am changing the word because this one is little tricky okay so it most probably ask into the microsoft exam and number of time this question is damn sure you will get whether in the case of you know the list whether it is case of this thing the slicing they would definitely ask one or two question okay 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay minus uh, 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 okay now x is equal to sorry i am i am doing this slicing x of uh 1 colon 4 colon 3 okay now you guys will tell me what output i will get Uh, this this one from the yogesh okay yogesh please 
why okay and uh, from Bopinda sir and from Helen man yeah yeah perfect very good now the picture is clear for everyone because I am saying I am standing over here on the first point okay that I have to consider this first point absolutely that I have to take this point and after that I am saying okay take the jump of three take the jump of three when I take the jump of three that is one plus three that is four okay that is four and four is not my boundary my boundary is up to only three up to three so this is the concept I think the picture is very much clear for everyone okay so I am taking I am doing I am doing this time x colon colon minus one now can can anybody tell me what output I will get complete string but I this time starting from starting from minus one and minus one is this one okay minus one is this one so it's always minus one okay always minus one so minus one I have to start from minus one n o h t y p the reverse of an entire string okay the reverse of an entire string now it always say always say the complete string okay it says complete string and start from minus one and minus one I am standing over this time okay I am standing over here this time after that I have to move again minus one minus two minus three minus three minus four how it is minus one minus one that is minus two okay minus two minus uh, uh, this one minus one that is minus three okay minus three minus one that is minus four minus four minus one that is minus five something like this okay so this is the funda this is the funda if I do the positive one if I do the positive one if I take this positive one then what I have what what I says 0 plus 1 1 1 plus 1 2 2 plus 1 3 3 plus 1 4 and so on 4 plus 1 5 so always 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 this concept keep this funda into the mind so now they uh, this is the way to do the you know the reverse of a string now I will show you the practical the picture would be more clear for the same okay so let's suppose the first I am taking this Python word okay this Python word now I am doing observe carefully I will perform all the concept that I show you you know the theoretical I will perform all the concepts X okay then colon colon 3 now you can check the output is pH okay I say the complete string but I am taking the stepping of 3 the stepping of 3 as I already told you the stepping of 3 now you can you can you can check this output you can comparison this output with this okay so it's mean the complete string in a step of 3 p and after that I am taking the step of 3 that is the h okay after that the string is covered the 6 index is not there so it will not perform that step because the 6 index is not available if the 6 index is available then it will give me the 6 index okay for example same thing now I am I am generating the 6 index and the 6 index is y okay so I am performing the same step now you will get the phy because I added the 6 index okay y so okay now again I am taking x okay minus 4 colon minus 2 now you will get h o okay you will get h o index of minus 2 it's it's always n minus 1 as we know as we know it's always n minus 1 if I taking the two steps it's always n minus 1 okay if it is always n minus 1 I am starting from minus 4 index and the minus 4 index is this h okay minus 4 index is this h and minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 so this one is a funda okay this one is a funda for the same because not consider this thing this thing minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 so this h is minus 4 okay and I am saying minus 4 to minus 2 and minus 2 means minus 2 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 that my boundary is always n minus 1 my boundary is always n minus 1 keep this point into the mind okay so in this case I am saying minus 4 I have to start from minus 4 and up to minus 2 and up to minus 2 
so minus 2 mean this is my boundary and I have to up to this up to this mean minus 2 minus 1 that is minus 3 that mean I have only property of minus 4 index and minus 3 index so I will give you the output something like this so this is the funda always n minus 1 okay whether it's a positive case whether it's a negative case okay so I am going to reverse the complete string x colon colon minus 1 now you are getting the complete string but this time I'm starting from this side y n o h t y p okay y n o h t y p so this is the concept of the slicing this thing okay and indexing this thing most important most important because this one is the base of your programming base of your string so i think the picture is clear for everyone this we we are not going to discuss more into this thing this point of time later on we will elaborate in it into the great detail just to do your work to do your small small assignment this is more than enough for right now anyone anyone having any doubt till now do let me ask okay so when we start this thing when we start this thing I, I said you I will tell you the difference between these two okay now the time came out okay there is no difference both will be considered as a sting okay both will be considered as a sting so here as you can observe the i star the same thing with double quotes now i will show you the same thing with single quote and you will get the output the same okay there is no difference okay so this time i start and start and one second one second i'll take your question one second i start and stop this thing with single quote and i am performing the same scenario whatever scenario that i perform on the double quotes so you are getting the same output so till now there is no difference okay till now there is no difference whether the string is start from double quote whether the string is start from single quote the output is exactly same whatever operation that you perform it will treat as a string okay but yes there is slightly difference now i am going to tell you what exactly that difference is okay someone is going to ask me the question who was okay no problem no problem sir a recording will be available with one hour okay so so in this case <coughs> in this case now there is very little difference between these two the one is starting from double quote okay and the second one is starting from single quote now if i if if i say you what exactly difference between these two okay now my requirement is let's suppose i want to assign this string into the x variable he is he is good boy okay that is my requirement he is he is good boy so if i start this thing with single quote and close with with this string single quote my interpreter will give me the error why so he say he will say okay this is the perfect symbol you start your string with single quote you enclose your string with single quote now what is this i didn't understand it so in this case your interpreter will give you the error message okay he will say what is this so you will get the error message but your requirement is this one that you are supposed to use this post office s into the entire string then how it is possible so in this case okay in this case what you have to do you have to start your string with the double quotes and enclose your string with double quote keep this point into mind okay if your requirement is this one you are using this post office s inside this string so if you are using this concept that what what exactly that you have to do you have to start your string with double quote and you have to enclose your string with double quote otherwise you will get the error message that is the invalid syntax error okay perfect the case is clear sir now let's suppose your requirement is this one he is now this good is into double quotes that you want to represent he is good boy so in this case now observe carefully if you start your string with double quote and close your string with double quote your interpreter will say okay this is fine okay what is this this is again fine now what you did this so you will get the error message okay in this case you will get error message but your specific requirement is this one that you are supposed to represent this string into double quotes so how how you will manage this so very simple for this type of requirement what you have to do you have to start your string with single quote okay and enclose with the single quote 
so this is the way to handle this thing okay now again but sir this time my requirement is this one i need both i need both then how then how i need both okay don't worry about it if your requirement is this one you need both post offices and double quotes inside your string then how this kind of you know uh, uh, the output is taken care so for this scenario what you have to do you have to start your string with triple single quotes and close your string with the triple single quotes make sure make sure if you are starting your string with triple single quotes it is mandatory to enclose your string with triple triple quotes then this type of scenario will be taken care okay this type of scenario will be taken care keep this panda into the mind your requirement is something like this then you are how you can handle this type of requirement with the help of triple single quotes with the help of triple uh, triple double single quotes okay so make sure you are starting with triple single quote and close with triple single quote okay another way another way otherwise what you can do you can start your string with triple double quotes okay you can and close your string with triple double quotes but make sure if you are starting your string with triple double quotes make sure to and close your string with triple double quotes if you are starting your string with triple single quotes make sure you are supposed to perform this okay that's then this situation will be will be handled okay this situation will be handled so this is the funda so this is the funda if you if your requirement is something like this this is the only difference between double quotes and single quotes otherwise there is no difference okay otherwise there is no difference. again it would be considered as a string don't worry about it you can perform any operation that are available with this thing you can perform all the operation okay so this is the only difference between the double quotes and the single quote so i think the picture is clear for everyone i think this picture is clear for everyone okay good <clears throat> now moving little ahead so the next is your list okay the major data types uh your tuple okay your dictionary that is dict basically okay and your set so these are the data types okay that we are going to discuss today whatever data type left okay that would be automatically cover when our uh, whenever you know the course will move ahead that automatically will be covered step by step so these are very basics okay and uh, i will touch the basic points only so after completion of these data types okay the basic of these data types now you you will say to yourself now you are little bit comfortable into the python if you perform these you know practically by your own because these are the important one to understand to enter into the python okay so understand it so list we know it very well that we discussed yesterday tuple we know it very well this is the way to define the tuple inside python dictionary and set okay that dictionary is representing like this the set is again representing like this then you will say sir what is the difference between these two both are representing with the same symbols okay if i define something like this if i define something like this in the both of cases it would be treated as a it would be treated as a dictionary okay why so because the priority of the dictionary is higher than the set the priority of the dictionary is higher than the set and the representation of dictionary and the representation of the set is similar yes but they when we enter the value inside dictionary enter the value inside the set they both follow the different way okay i will touch this point after before i have to cover these two basics okay so we know it very well we know it very well this is the collection of the heterogeneous object yes this is again collection of the heterogeneous object we know it very well and one is fall under the mutable object and the second one is fall under the immutable object there is only this this difference between these two so by default the indexing we know very well 
by default the positive indexing we know very well the negative indexing we know very well we know very well same the negative in indexing is implica uh, Im implement inside the list and inside the tuple as well okay we know the negative indexing perfectly we know it we know the slicing perfectly we know the slicing okay sir we know the multiple slicing yes multiple collector slicing we know it okay we know it yes applicable over here okay here from this type you will get 20 30 and ram here again you will get 20 30 and ram okay it is the mutable object it is the immutable object okay mutable mean that you and you can change the content you can add the content okay you can update the content but here you are not supposed to do it let's suppose let's suppose you want to enter something into this list for entering the data into this list we have a method and that method name is called append okay in computer science okay in computer science whenever you term whenever the term use append by yourself okay that's mean end of the data keep this funda into the mind whenever whenever you use append inside the computer science okay simply one funda is there it's mean append at the end of the existing data okay at at the end of the existing data this is the concept of the append in whole computer science world okay so over here if you want to append something so there is method that method is called append why i can perform the append because this is the concept of the mutable and if this, this is the mutable that's mean i can change the content i can add the content i can delete the content i can do anything because it 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 allows me why allows me because this is the concept of the mutable that we already discussed in great detail yesterday okay let's suppose you want to append something so l dot append okay l dot append and i want to append let's suppose 5000 okay 5000 now this 5000 will be appended at the end of existing data okay 5000 would be appended at the end of the existing data so this is called the one method i show you only one method and similar like this we have approximately 12 to 15 methods which are used with this list we will discuss this list into the greater detail when we will when we will move to the list section for this point of time i just show you the one method if you want to append something into the existing data then we have the method that method is called append the same thing when you try to append over here okay when you try to append over here immediately you will get the error message why so because this is the concept of the immutable if the immutable objects are there then you are not supposed to change it you are not supposed to update it you are not supposed to add the content so this is the difference between list and tuple that I already discussed in great detail mutable and immutable okay so i'll just show you the one method if you try to same method inside the list inside the tuple you will get the error message so let me show you first okay let me show you this practically then the picture would be more clear okay so this one is list okay this one is the list 10 20 30 and 4 okay i am doing the slicing now i am doing the negative slicing you are getting the list into the reverse direction okay you can do the same thing one colon let's suppose one one okay one colon three now you will get the output that is 20 30 that's mean i am saying index of one index of two by default we know this is the zero index this is the one index this is two and this is three okay same thing i want to append something so appending something that the uh, is l dot append okay l dot append append of let's suppose this one i want to append yes now this is the appended where it is appended at the end of the data end of the data mean at the after four okay after four now when i print this l you will get this appended content okay appended content now the same thing i am performing over the tuple okay now i am changing these braces as a tuple okay now it's l become the tuple okay l become tuple now the same thing i want to do slicing yes implemented okay negative slicing again implemented but when i do the appending okay now this time this l is a tuple and inside tuple that i want to append something 
and now it will give you the error message the apple object has no at attribute that is the append why so because this is the concept of the immutable and we know it this is the immutable and that's why we are trying to add some content into it and it won't allow us uh, it won't allow us okay so this is the concept of the mutable and the immutable objects i think till now the picture is very much clear if you have any doubt please let me ask before moving to the dictionary and the set please anyone having doubt okay perfect good so the next one is dictionary and set okay the representation of dictionary the representation of set both are used curly braces okay inside dictionary and inside set slicing and indexing not available inside dictionary and inside set slicing and indexing that is not applicable okay because these are not the continuous memory locations okay so keep this point into the mind you are not supposed to do the slicing you are not supposed to do the indexing in the case of set in the case of dictionary now the representation of set is something like this okay the dictionary is something like this sir then what is the difference sir what is the difference between these two till now there is no difference both will be considered as a dictionary this time this s doesn't mean it's a set okay it's again treated as a dictionary if i print the type of s okay print the type of d in the both of the cases you will get the output that is the dictionary okay that would be dictionary so so then what is the difference between these two sir what is the difference between these two okay the dictionary is collection of the dictionary is collection of key and value pair okay key and value pair the set is collection of heterogeneous objects okay the dictionary is collection of key value pair the set is collection of the heterogeneous objects now first understand the dictionary then we will move to the set if i want to define a dictionary then i have to define a data in the form of the key value pairs okay the key value pair then how i can define let's suppose this one is a key and this ram is a value okay this two is a key this ravi is a value okay now next this raj is a key and kumar is a value okay now this 100 is a key 200 is a value okay so this is a collection of the key value pair the dictionary is a collection of key value pair this would be treat as a key this would treat as a value this would treat as a key this would treat as a value this would treat as a key this would treat as a value so why i use this raj and kumar so picture make more clear key cannot always be integer it's not a hard and fast rule always key should be in the form of the integer key can be integer okay key can be integer key can be string value can be integer okay value can be string key value pair can be integer integer key value pair can be string string key value pair can be int string okay there is no hard and fast rule key should always be integer no no like this okay but make sure make sure this is the concept of the heterogeneous sorry this is the concept of the mutable objects okay dictionary is mutable set is a mutable so in this case in this case key should always be unique okay key should always be unique for example in a class in a class 
देर कैन नॉट बी टू पर्सन विद सेम रोल नंबर टू पर्सन विद सेम रोल नंबर नो इट कैन नॉट बी हैपन इट कैन नॉट बी हैपन ओके द सेम थिंग ओवर हेयर दिस इज नथिंग दिस इज नथिंग द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ दिस इज दिस की ओके द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ दिस इज दिस की सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई एम सेइंग वन इफ आई एम सेइंग वन then what is the meaning what i am i am trying to say it what i am trying to say it i am saying i am saying ram if i am saying to that's mean i am saying ravi if i am saying raj that's mean i am saying i am talking about this kumar because this one is a key and this one is a value for example the roll number 1 okay the roll number 1 let's mean the roll number 1 is ravi kant okay roll number 2 again the name can be same ravi kant doesn't matter doesn't matter because the roll number is unique the roll number is unique that doesn't matter in this case okay the let's suppose the key is 3 the name is again ravi yes this is possible this is possible but make sure the key should be unique if you try to use the same key then it will override the existing key because this is the concept of the mutable okay so this is the concept of the dictionary now if i want to process this ram then what i have to do i have to pass this key okay when i pass this key then it will give me the ram okay and let's suppose i want to process this kumar then i have to pass this key raj and output would be kumar okay i i if i pass the value 100 the output would be 200 because this 100 key the value is 200 if you pass it t of 0 now it will give you the error message that is the key error why so because zero key is not available and you are trying to fetch the zero roll number okay Five roll number is not present, and you are trying to fetch the five key. Okay, the roll number five is not inside the class, and you are asking for roll number five. That means you are doing the wrong operation. So in this case, you are getting the key error. So keep this point into the mind. The key should be always unique, and this concept is not slicing. Okay, this concept is not slicing. This concept that we are passing the key, and according to that key, we are fetching the data appropriate, which is appropriate to that key. Okay, which is associated to that key. So keep this funda inside the mind. So slicing is I am not doing slicing over here. Okay, this is not a slicing. I am passing the key. If if you want to consider this concept as a slicing, that's mean you are doing the slicing on the basis of the key. It is mandatory that you have to pass the key, and when you have to pass the key, if that key is available, then you will get the appropriate value to that key. So this one is the funda. If you try to do this, okay, d of one, d of one. the existing value is ram but i assign new value ram kumar okay now this one key value has been updated to the ram kumar why so because this is the concept of the mutable so this is very basic about the dictionary okay this is very much basics about the dictionary i am i am leaving this topic over here because you are supposed to do the practical over this so you have saturday you have sunday in the sunday you are uh, you you are supposed to perform all these practically okay i am not showing you the practical for this part okay so this would be your assignment that you are supposed to perform the practical of this by your own i am not showing you so if you have any doubt till now in this dictionary because i am closing this dictionary then i am moving to the set if you have any doubt for this dictionary please let me ask no doubt okay that's it okay the next is the set okay the next is the set the set <coughs> the representation of set is same but this time it's a dictionary because i didn't specify over here why so because the priority of the dictionary is higher than this set the priority of the dictionary is higher than this set it now it's considering as a dictionary but i want to assign the value when i want to assign when i will assign the value to it it become this set the set is a collection of the heterogeneous object and again it's a mutable okay again it's a mutable so how i can define it into the set set this by this way 1 2 3 ram okay 80 80.5 whatever you want to assign you can assign 1 2 3 4 or something like this now now this become a set okay again you are not perform you cannot perform the slicing okay and indexing because it is a heterogeneous object and not into the continuous memory location okay slicing and indexing is not applicable over here 
Okay, but the one of the beautiful feature of a set, one of the beautiful feature of a set that what you want to do, it automatically remove duplicates. When I print this S, okay, when I print this S, it automatically remove duplicates. Okay, now when I print this S, what output I, you will get? The duplicates automatically remove. These are the duplicates that automatically remove. What output you will get? One, two, three, RAM. Okay, eighty point five and four. Yes, this is the feature of the set. The duplicate items automatically remove. You don't need to write a specifically code for the same. Okay, when you assign the data into the set, it automatically remove. Duplicate item automatically remove. Very simple logic. Let's suppose this one your list, and list contain duplicate items. The list contain duplicate item. You want to remove these duplicate item. The two ways are there. One way that you have to think the logic for the same. You have to think the logic for the same. That means you have to design your own logic. The second way, what you can do, you can do the type casting concept. Do type casting concept. Now, what is the type casting concept? The converting the one data type to another. If I convert this list into the set, automatically duplicates automatically removed. How I can do this? Set of L. Okay, I am converting this list to set. So again, same that like this. I did binary of ten. The same thing. This time I am using set and I am converting it into the list. Okay, when I converting this list into set, automatically duplicates remove. Then what output you will get? Ten, twenty, thirty. So this is the feature applicable with the set. There are two way. One way that you are supposed to do the hard core. The second way, if you know the set feature, you can simply do the type casting and your work is done with a single line of code. So where it is implemented? Let's suppose you are fetching the data from the n number of people. Okay, let's suppose you fetch the data of one lakh people. Okay, you 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 find out the mobile number of one lakh people, and in this data set, your unique entries are only fifty thousand. But without doing the pre-processing of the data, you send the messages to the one lakh contact numbers. What is happening? Let's suppose my number is five time. I am getting the same message five time, and I will get irritated. If I am if I am planning to buy something, I will won't plan with you because you are you you did irritate me. Okay, so this is the concept. So this is the usage of this kind of things. One way you don't know this set concept, don't worry about it. Create your own logic, process your own data, try to find out the duplicate items from this data. Another way you know very well the set, just do the type casting of this data and do your and solve your problem. So this feature is applicable only with set that the duplicate items are automatically removed and slicing and indexing is not applicable. And this is the collection of the heterogeneous object. Now, when I assign this type of data, now it becomes the set. If I leave it empty, leave it leave it empty. Now it's a dictionary because the priority of the dictionary is higher than the set. And dictionary is collection of the key value pair. Okay. So any question, any doubt, you can ask me before closing this session. So I think more than enough for today. So you, I am not showing you the practical part of this. You are supposed to do the practical of all what I what I teach today. and you have sunday enjoy your sunday at least give 2 hours minimum to this python watch my videos once again if you if you are feeling any doubt any difficulty okay and try to perform the uh, uh, the practical whatever practical that we did today anyone else any question please ask me helen ma'am you are trying to say something yes okay that's great so that's mean i am teaching on the way that you guys are you know understanding each and everything in one shot like this <laughs> that's great or or otherwise just you are saying okay no no sir we don't have any doubt no no sir we don't have any doubt <laughs> okay try uh, try and you will definitely uh, would have some doubts and i would be happy if you come with doubts if you come with doubts definitely that's mean you do the practice because there is only one month to learn this kind of things python the practice practice and practice that you have to do practice so should we close this session okay okay thank you thank you for thank you for attending